Welcome to another 359. I'm Ben Fox Rubin. I'm Alfred Ng. I'm Joni Salzman. Perhaps the biggest takeaway from the Google I.O. developer conference yesterday was an experimental technology called Google Duplex. It's basically a human sounding Google assistant that can make phone calls to people on your behalf to schedule restaurant reservations or hair appointments. What did you guys think of this thing? Creepy. I feel really bad that I was actually fooled by it um, because I wasn't paying attention to the conversation, to the presentation. I was working on another story when they demoed Duplex, but I was listening in and I'm like, why are they just playing two people talking on the phone? I don't get it. What's And everyone else like in the newsroom was kind of like, that's crazy. What's going on? And I'm like, that's just two people talking. I don't get it. What's To me, what was interesting about it too was that um, to make a robot sound like a person it almost seemed like too easy. All you had to do was like elongate certain words, throw in an mm-hmm or an um. It was like, is it really that easy to- I mean, to... I I think those demos though showed like they must have called the most polite businesses in town because <laughs> like- Well, they also had the demo where the woman um, had English as a second language who was responding and was hard mm-hmm. to under- I mean, as an English speaker talking on the phone, it would have been hard for me to understand just to show how the- um, artificial intelligence was at listening to someone maybe who's not rude but who is um having difficulty understanding what person a person a person quote unquote talking in english is asking and then responding in a way that's broken english as well yeah do you think that this is a good idea is this something that google should actually be offering I think that no matter what maybe we can all agree that there needs to be some ground rules about when you devise a robot to talk to people to be transparent about the fact that they're talking to a robot, right? Mm -hmm. I'm very worried about the implications that this has if this technology gets to, you know, like telemarketers and robocallers in the sense that like now they can do this like on a massive scale and you won't know that it's a bot immediately. There is a version of that. I definitely have gotten calls of that before, but they're really lousy. Yeah. So you're you're totally right. My point, yeah, like that it would get much better and then it would be much harder for you to tell that it's like a te- like a machine running like this telemarketing operation where they're like calling you like eight times a day over it. Yeah. And to be clear, Google said that they do plan on letting the human on the other side of the phone know that they're talking to a robot. It's still unclear exactly how they're actually going to do that. And they plan on slowly rolling this out because it is experimental. Uh, next, Google also revealed a new feature for its Google Assistant that will let you ask follow-up questions to it without constantly saying, hey, Google, or okay, Google. Uh, The feature is coming this summer. Amazon unveiled a similar feature in March that's already live. You guys like this idea? Is it interesting? I just wish they would give you the ability to change the wake word for it because saying, hey, Google, a lot is annoying, and this kind of addresses that. But like also saying, hey, Google, at all is really annoying because when I was using my Amazon Echoes, I would just say Echo for it, and that would be it. Hey, Google is very annoying to say all the time. Yeah, I think just saying Google might be a little off. I'm not really sure. Uh, Last, Google's new operating system, Android P, wants to help you curb your phone addiction. Alfred, you wrote about this. Uh, Give us some highlights. What's what's interesting? Yeah, so they introduced uh, several new features. One of the biggest ones for it is a uh, Android dashboard. It's an app on your phone that you can see like how much time you're spending on certain apps. It tells you like how many times you've unlocked your phone that day, what apps you use the most. The idea of, like being like, hey, maybe you shouldn't spend uh, eight hours a day, you know, on YouTube watching like dog videos the whole day. I'd be terrified to see some of these statistics. Mm-hmm. Joan, is that something that you would actually use? Um, I think that it's, yeah, I think that I would use some of these features for sure. Um, and I think it's interesting that uh, you know, these directly go against Google's own well-being, you know, like right. <laughs> getting you to stop using your phone. They're in the business of getting you addicted to all their services. Totally. Um, so it's interesting that they're allowing, they're listening to consumers that are fed up with how these services kind of feel like they take over their lives in an exploitative way in some cases. Yeah. Uh, if you want to read more about these stories, check us out on CNET. I'm Ben Fox Rubin. I'm Alfred Ang. I'm Joni Salzman. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Remix. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was that was pretty good. That was we efficient. managed to do a lot in four minutes. I think duplex is creepy too. It was it was four and a half minutes. Technically. You know what? You know how like one of the other announcements from yesterday is that there's more voices now. What if yeah. John Legend could be your assistant and make these calls you, for you? Someone give this man a billion dollars. 
That's a billion dollar. Oh, wait. For watching the keynote? <laughs> Where's mine? Wait, that <laughs> happened. You're going to call like a hair salon and have John Legend go, <laughs> happy birthday. <laughs> That's about as much John Legend singing as I can manage. Hey, this is John Legend. I'd like to make an appointment for, for Alfred. For it's uh, this is spelled John Legend A-L-F-R-E-D. <laughs> the first name is Lisa. <laughs> it's it's there are still some obvious tells uh brian am i putting you on the spot too much to try to get the actual audio can we play the audio for the fine people out there i want you to listen oh, for the for phone Google call Duplex. okay give me you got to give me a second you guys talk amongst yourselves for one i just had to make one quip that i could not stop thinking about uh during the show and that's uh we i've said hey google so many times the words have lost all meaning <laughs> Chimney chillikers. <laughs> we did it. It took us seven hours, but we did it. I, I will admit that the follow-up questions thing is very much in the order of first world problem issues, but I it, it, using these things a lot, it is pretty annoying, and it kind of makes me not want to use them as much when, especially in my morning routine, I have to say Alexa three times in a row to find out the weather, the time, and whether it's going to rain that day. So yeah. I, I do think that's interesting, and it's definitely useful, and it could potentially get us uh, closer to the idea, which Alfred was talking about, where you don't even have to say a wake word at all. Um, well, I didn't say that. I just want them to change the wake words and Google Give you the, the option oh, to okay. say, like, yeah. I want my wake word to be Harvey Danger. So yeah. I, I, I talked to IBM about the idea that in the future, the AI is actually going to know well enough that you're talking to it and not someone else. Creepy. And yeah, I know. So you you wouldn't have to say a wake word at all. Like Alexa is just going to know that you're asking it a question and not a person. All right, so let's go ahead and take a demo of this. This is the new uh, Google Assistant duplex in the middle of a, of a demo call that they had with a restaurant. Here we go. Here's a table for Friday the 3rd. Hey, hold on one moment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Hold on one second. Mm -hmm. So Friday, November third. How many people? For two people. Two people? Yeah. What time? At five PM. Okay. And your name? The first name is Daniel. That's D A N I E L. Okay. You're all set. Okay, great. Thanks. We'll see you next Friday. Okay, thank you. Bye. So did you pick up on anything? I, I just like to say that Daniel is pretty dismissive at the end there. He's like, all right, bye. Well, yeah. I have no chit chat. He also has no uh, emotions. Right. Or <laughs> he's not a real person. person. Right. <laughs> it's also not Daniel himself making it. It's uh, his assistant doing it for him. Shocking. So, um, I, what I, Every time I listen to that, I think it's so, it's just funny to think about our brains and how they're more powerful than computers in ways. For um, now. For now. <laughs> but like the idea that like that they're like when he said when she asked how many people and he says four, two people, and he pauses on four to make it sound more human. I like I love the fact that you have to think about well the reason why a human would pause on four is because while she's looking for things, the human brain is like meandering and thinking about mm -hmm. other things and then almost like an automatic, you know, by rote you would be like Oh yeah, she's talking to me. I have to go back to what I was. You know, like computers don't do that. At least yeah. they don't have meandering like thoughts, and that's the reason. Like it's, it's a simulation of having other processes going on. Here's you know the what I thing. Mean? I love Here's the thing that's a little ironic about this is that if the robot is going to tell the person on the other line that they're a robot, why sound like a human at all? Why not just sound automated? Like why do the ums and the slowdown and up speak and things Maybe like that. Maybe it's more efficient for a person to I think to because not... Google's trying to make it like a conversational tone, right? Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, his question sense. is why why bother with a conversational mm -hmm. tone at all? If the if the if the robot has to disclose I am a robot calling on behalf of Daniel. Yeah. So like just get to the point, robot. I mean, like it's being conversational is the like Fluid. It's like it's the social. It's a. It's literally like a social lubricant to get things done. Like yeah. I mean, if you're on the phone with a with a robot, you might maybe because we are at the state we are right now, you would think I need to know what are the trigger words, what are like you know, because that's what we have to do yeah. with a lot of AI right now. You have to say things, you have to phrase them in a certain way in order to get the response that you need. Yeah, you could make the same argument about like the Google Home currently, um, with with some of the announcements that they made yesterday to make it more conversational. 
like why why would Google want to do that when you know that the Google Home is a machine? Yeah, I, they they added a pretty a please point. feature. I like, like the pretty please feature. No, but my point is I like agree. yeah, you know that it's a machine. You like why would you have to say that? But like the idea is yeah, they're trying to make things more conversational with its AI. It, it seems to me that it's also inevitable that your robot assistant is going to call the restaurant's robot assistant, and they're both going to act human at some point, and <laughs> you're just. Both have gonna do the have your robot people call my robot people, yeah. and we'll we'll do lunch. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think it, that that to me seems like it's it's going to be coming at the next Google I/O. So yeah, we'll see. All right, let's go ahead and jump into the chat and take some questions. Uh, Matthew Datcher wants to know. We've already kind of touched on this. What could duplex technology do to robo spam callers? Now oh God, we assume that the robo spam callers are going to employ this technology in order to abuse us, the potential customer. Now, let's go ahead and flip that theory on its head, and I want someone Ooh. out there to use Duplex to keep those damn spammers on the line right? and okay. ruin their lives. Right. I love this idea. I love but that. But the spammers are also robots. Robots, But too, eventually, so not... eventually, they actually have to pass it off to a client. So it just sounds like a, a cat and mouse situation. There's this incredible video. Yeah, but it takes us. We're not the mouse anymore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like it, if it's a robot. I have a robot, robot mouse now. Yeah. There's this Talk incredible video mouse. on YouTube where this guy found out like the like call center number for like this like this center that was like spamming him with a bunch of calls, and he developed a script that would like call it every like 30 seconds or something from like a bunch of like online phone numbers, um, and it would just keep spamming it and just saying like basically clog up their lines and he recorded all of their calls to a, like so at first they would just hang up on it immediately and then it got to a point where they like this they would just start cursing out his bot <laughs> wow it's incredibly like funny that's that's pretty awesome especially if the bot talks like arnold schwarzenegger no the bot is just it's it's like a text to speech kind of thing so it like sounds extremely robotic it's like hello you are a spammer and uh please stop calling my number kind of mm. thing yeah um, the other thing about Google Duplex, we were talking about conversational. Google uh, Home and also Alexa, they, they don't pause a lot. It, it, it's pretty, like, the, the conversation flows pretty quickly. They don't, they don't pause. They don't say, um, unless they're, like, saying a joke or it's, like, intentional or something like that. Do you think that that would cause you to use those assistants more often if they sound more like a person or they have, like, more ticks? I don't know. Um, because it would be annoying for the uses that we use now. Like when I want to know the weather, I get really annoyed that Alexa tells me information she already gave me. Like mm -hmm. if I ask for tomorrow's forecast, she'll say right now or what, you know what I mean? Like she goes over stuff I already know. So if it's more conversational in the sense that it's more efficient, then that would be great. But if it's more conversational in the sense that she's like, oh, hey, yeah, sure. I can tell you what the weather <laughs> is. Then that would be annoying because I just want to know the freaking weather. Totally agree. That's a good point. I feel like even if this feature was really useful and helpful, I would probably still make these appointments on my own anyway, uh, just because I like to get confirmation of these kinds of things on my own, and I don't really trust like the machine yeah. to do that. I just remember, I wanted to make a point too, and this is really important, I think. These really were just demos, yeah, and we weren't able to test this live, so we don't really know how well it works, and it's entirely possible that the technology looked really good in the demo because that's what the demo is for. And in the real world, it, it's not going to work nearly as well. So that's that's a big caveat that we should throw I can't out wait there. to see all the ways that it screws up. Yeah. It will, too. <laughs> yeah. We have some deep philosophy going on in the chat. Uh, Michael Brown says, this is going to bring up conversation about humans governing over robots. Why aren't self-aware robots worthy of kind words such as pretty please? Uh, then he goes well, on to say the idea that they're we not are the really? idea that we are better or more superior than robots is immediately a problem. Why do we humans think that we are superior? Are these Man. bot commenters soup? <laughs> Sit in that soup for a while. Well, that is that is a good question. One of the question, premises Michael. is that these are self-aware robots and they're not. So that's a. So, but if we're like projecting out to a future where robots are self-aware, is the question that we'll, like why do we feel we're superior and we don't need to say please? Is that the question? That's what it seems to like to extent. me. Oh, well, I think that's why it's great that there are there there are these initiatives to build in please because it's really gross to watch a child who's you know growing up in an age where voice is going to be how they interact with computers to just hear them like yell and demand there at was, these machines, there especially was a, because uh, a lot of them are personified as women. That's disturbing there was me. a slate article that was like don't date anybody that yells at their robot yeah, voice assistant too. and i was like 
what kind of psycho like yells at the robot voice assistant? Like, what the what's wrong with you? Well, yeah, I, I usually person, feel bad, right? Like, I don't, I don't know. It's because it sounds like a person. Usually, if I'm a little curt with Alexa, I will then feel bad afterward, and it's a weird um, feeling. I have. mean, I tell Alexa she's stupid all the time. I'll yeah, admit it. I'll be like, here. Alexa, I didn't, I didn't even say your name. Like, I know. Why are you bothering me? Yeah, but don't you feel a little bad afterward because you're a nice person? I don't. Okay, I still think you're a nice person. Thanks. But fine. I don't feel bad. Do you feel bad when you yell at your car for not, uh, not starting up or something? Ooh, wow. Probably not. Not the same yeah. way I would with Alexa. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. This reboot of Pinocchio sucks. <laughs> Either way, great question, Michael. Excellent question. Uh, a couple more. Tyson Edwards says, I feel like people are going to catch on to these quirks and the mannerisms, the mm-hmms and the mm-hmm. ahs. And yeah, uh, I predict true. that many people are going to start uh, calling that out and trolling during the calls. And I think he's right. I think totally we right. will pick up. But there's always going to be someone out there like, your grandma ain't going to figure it out, and then it's going to get ugly. Um, I mean, so most of these, so all you can do with these, like this bot right now is like what? Like set up appointments? It's very limited. It's very limited. Yeah, so I'm just thinking, like, why would you, like, want to troll it anyway? It's just like, oh, this is a bot. I don't want, like, this person's business or something like that. That doesn't really make that much sense to me. Uh, grandma might really appreciate the phone call. What, yeah. you're going to make an appointment with your grandma? I don't know. I don't know. I, I, it's well, um, Someone will. When I was in Seattle last year, uh, they were talking about the idea of helping lonely people with these types of conversational bots, right. letting them have conversations right. and making it a little bit more useful than just having it play your music or tell you what the weather is. And we're not there yet, but it, it did sound like an interesting and obviously like a more altruistic concept for this type of technology. Um, As I've already talked on this. My, my first thought when they were showing Duplex was um, selfishly, this would make talking to my in-laws so much easier. <laughs> if I could just put on a bot. First name is Joan. Say, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They don't watch this show, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> they definitely don't watch this show. If the AI watched this show, we would all be kaput. How many of you We'd all the, be finished when they take over. I'm I'm like, how many of you of in the viewers. chat are AI right now? <laughs> I like this comment from Mary Anderson. Actually, no, oh. but like on that point, I you know I also was thinking about how you know how in like movies they say that like um when cops are undercover, they can't do the drugs, and so the way to check if you're if you have a cop in your midst is like it's entrapment. Try. Yeah, yeah. So, um, wouldn't it be great though if there is some sort of like you if you ask a bot, are you a bot? They have to say they're a bot. Yeah, like, essentially a new kind of wake word. Yeah, well, it's not even a wake word, but it's like if there were some sort of understanding, it would or regulation or something that like if you're programming a bot, it needs to have like if you ask it a query, are you a robot? It has to answer yes. That's I mean, it does kind of behaving like. Uh, a sort of wake word. I'm I'm with you on that one. Actually, I think that would work better than the potential for um. You know, they were talking about putting a disclaimer, like a misnomer, right in the front kind of thing. Like, yeah. hello, I am so and so's digital assistant, and then moving on with the conversation like that. That might sail over some people's heads. Maybe there are situations where you can be blissfully ignorant, but the idea of being like, I suspect something. I am aware of this digital assistant technology. I'm going to call it out, and I need, to, and I, I deserve. I have a right to know. Yeah. And to be able to say that, and Google is legally required to make that voice respond in a scripted manner to say, disclose, yes, I am a digital assistant, something like That's that. That's how right. the police work in Blade Runner. All right. Like, oh, wait, no, you have this... to look in their eye, right? Yeah, you have yeah. to look in their eye. <laughs> Should we close. put this to the test? Brian, are you a robot? Oh, God. <laughs> I'm oh, out no. of here! He's melting down. <laughs> His programming's out of date. Malfunction. Can we get the duplex on the podcast? Absolutely. It would, it's just going to be me. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> Congratulations questions. to our friends at Giant Bomb next door. As I'm sure they're, what are they playing today? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, more questions uh, from Matthew Datcher again with Duplex. Once again, technology threatens an entire class of employee. Yeah. Soon there are going to be no need for personal assistance. Uh, now, if only Google could pick up my dry cleaning. Give it time. Personal assistance, and also, um, you know, when you call Amazon customer service, or when you, you know, anybody that's in a customer service center, a call center. Um, they could be automated out by this, more so than automation already has. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mm-hmm. wanted to go back. <laughs> mm-hmm. 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 I wanted to go back and just touch on this uh, comment from Mary Anne. I yell at Alexa sometimes, and I feel bad afterwards. I've actually apologized to her before. Thank you, Mary Ann. <laughs> we have that in common. Uh, more questions, more questions. From Josh Boyda, did Google give a timeline on the rollout 
on the Google Lens to the OEMs mm. uh, that they partnered with. Oh, yeah. So I wrote that story. Um, so the um, it's supposed to be coming out next week. I believe it's a really short timeline. That's quick. Yeah, I think that the feature is supposed to be available starting next week with the um, handset makers that it disclosed, which, by the way, are of course Pixel, LG's G7 is included, um, Asus. I'm trying to think about Motorola, other ones. Was Xiaomi in there? I can't. Yes, Xiaomi was in there, but um, the two biggest handset makers in the world, uh, Apple and Samsung, were not. Mm -hmm. um, not Bummer really any me. big surprise, but yeah, not included. Uh, one more from Josh Boyd, and maybe you can expand on this one, Joan, too. Uh, they said that the certain Android manufacturers are going to get lens in the camera app on the phone. Yeah. That's yeah. true. Yeah, so it'll be inside your camera app itself. That's the idea, is that you won't have to open up a separate app in order to get these cool things, like being able to copy and paste words if you put your camera um, frame on your phone over a book or a sign or, you know, pop up of information, um, all the stuff that they were demoing. Yeah. The idea is that when you open up your camera, take a picture. Um, and if you ever want to just pull up some information, you won't have to, you'll have that, you know, everyone has their camera app as one of their, you know, at the bottom of the screen homepage things. Usually um, it'll be right there for you. I want to say that the one thing I took away from yesterday's keynote that I was the most excited about was definitely the uh, the AI or um, augmented reality in the apps. Yeah. In the in maps, maps specifically. Yeah. Oh, like the Sorry. fox like the that fox? leads you around. Well, screw the fox, but the idea because it's that blue, it's the blue dot. <laughs> it's the blue dot dance, like she said, and it, we've all oh, had yeah. that problem. Mm -hmm. And I get so oh. twisted around yeah. down like in the Lower East Side here in the city. Uh, that would be extremely helpful. I love that idea. Was the fox uh, so? Just to clarify for me, because I, I I think I missed this part. The fox is literally there to show you around. Yeah, the fox it, like, is supposed to like just being like a silly clippy four point oh. It like leads you to where you need to walk to. It's like Pokemon okay. Go, but actually useful. But you don't need the. F that, that's just one option on there. Just yeah. the idea of having the arrows pointing you immediately, like orienting for you on the 3D scale, and I didn't even mind the idea that it starts popping up with what were essentially ads telling you, like, oh, there's a restaurant over here, and then there's a gas station over here kind of thing. I don't mind that. I like mm -hmm. that. I mean, you can't see around every corner sometimes. Hey, and they yeah. gotta make money. I hope they that open too. it up to, like, other developers so that I can get a little AR Morpheus, and he's just like, come with me if you want to live, and they're just, like, <laughs> leading me to, like, where I need to you go. Mean you mean Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> sure. Doesn't he play Morpheus? doesn't say that line. Who's Morpheus? Lawrence Fishburne. Right, right, right. All right. Anyway, when you start doing the Google Map, does he offer you a red pill or a blue pill? There you go. Now you got the references right. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> go back to the '90s, Alpha. Like, like to replace you with Duplex now? Uh, let's take one more from Joseph. Uh, Google Lens on iOS is only integrated in the Google Photos app. Once a photo is uploaded, why can't Google release a standalone Google Lens app that yeah. works with the camera app? I know. I agree. I'm with you. Yeah. I didn't even know Google Lens was available on iOS yet. I thought they well, were. Well, it's part of Google Photos, I think, and then and it's part of Google Assistant too. Um, so I don't know. I don't, I'm not up on the integrations with iOS at all. But um, you can use both of those. If you're really in love with Google iOS, Lens, right? you should probably get a Pixel. I feel like Pixel always gets yeah. the newest Google Lens stuff yeah. first. Yeah. Are we done? I think we're done. Uh, Are we done here? I mean, okay. for now. I mean, there's mm -hmm. still some great conversation going on mm -hmm. in the chat, as always. Mm -hmm. um, I, I guess, Tyson, let's take one more from Tyson. How do you think that the energy consumption will be once you start using a camera as well as GPS simultaneously? Well, I'm not going to leave it on all the time. I'm thinking, like, in very specific scenarios, it can really be a headache saver. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, you got a good point there. That's going to murder your battery. Yeah, well, hopefully. The good news is, yeah. is with Android P, they were talking about uh, better uh, battery management. Stuff, uh, so. what, what was it called? App appropriation something? Uh, they they had a, a swanky <laughs> slang name for it. Their like names are do. all not terrible. That good. <laughs> so they're bad. all like way too straightforward. They had some innovations, but duplex, they need they need the better marketing. What is that? <laughs> a terrible movie starring Ben Stiller from the engineer was like eight. looking for an apartment was, or something. He was house hunting. He was house hunting. <laughs> He's like codenamed Duplex, and then it just stuck. <laughs> I guess. Uh, okay, so that's going to be it. That's it for us for, is it Thursday? No, it's Wednesday. No, it's Wednesday. We got one more. It's been a long week. <laughs> Every day this week I've woken up and been like, oh, thank God it's Saturday. <laughs> oh, Joan. Oh, Joan, I'm so sorry. I haven't uh, even woken up this week. 
He's our bot. Just ignore him. <laughs> it's time to Kinda recharge true. Alfred's battery. Yeah. But yeah, thanks again for joining us. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow on time this time. Apologies again, and thank you for sticking with us. Uh, who wants to take us out on the script today? I'll do it. Okay. Uh, the 359 podcast is available on iTunes, TuneIn, Stitcher, FeedBurner, Google Play Music, um, mm-hmm. Amazon Echo, and of course, CNET.com. Thanks, That's everybody. For CNET.com? C-N-E-T dot C-O-N. The first name is CNET. C-N-E-T. Thank mm-hmm. you for listening. Cool. Mm-hmm. All right. Thanks, everybody, for listening. We'll see you again tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs>